Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to my first Elden Ring video. After a hundred plus hours of journeying the lands between, I finally conquered all the main bosses and became the Elden Lord. Or not, I actually chose to not be maidless anymore because I'm down fat. Why did I just choose a regular ending? Overall, I had a lit time on my first playthrough. I gotta say, this game is very addicting because I didn't want the fun to end. It's literally like crack. So today, I will be challenging myself to beat an Elder Ring using only bows. This means I can't use any sort of sword, katana, or anything that doesn't shoot an arrow. Now, this will be a tough challenge because bows are dog water. There is no bow in this game that has better than descaling for any attribute, even when you fully upgrade it. Like, huh? I understand that bows aren't meant to be used as main weapons, but these things be shooting toothpicks, bruh. I'm pretty excited yet nervous for this challenge because I know it will take a lot of patience and there might be a lot of raging. My first playthrough went pretty rough because this is my first Souls game. Yes, I know, but we'll speak on that another time though. <laughs> but regardless of this being my first Souls game, after the 100 plus hours and all the dying to the bosses and stuff like that, I'm pretty confident in my skill to complete this challenge. I think it's time to begin our journey. Can we beat Elder Ring using only bows? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Which one do I go with? I know the long bow does more damage, but then also I believe the short bow comes with the uh, barrage skill. I guess we'll start off with the bandit. It literally looks like a um, a cannibal from uh, the forest. <laughs> God, this thing's ugly. All right, we're gonna name him the bow bandit. I think that fits him perfectly. Look at them little cheeks. Bro, what did you just say? They only give him 30 arrows? We're about to conquer the lands between with the bow bandit. All right, so a little reminder, this is a bow only run and the goal is to beat the game, meaning our objective is to fight only main bosses. Unless there are items we need for our build that requires us to fight the optional bosses. Ah, here we go. Limgrave. Oh, the tree sentinel. Security. Damn. You just said I'm maidenless. Does this face look maidenless to you? Does this face look maidenless to you? Hold up. I should shoot you. All right, I know I stated that I'm only going for the main bosses, but I refuse to let the tree sentinel roam around like he runs shit. Oh, look who we got here. The tree sentinel. You know, on my first playthrough, it took me 100 tries. He might be an optional boss, but I mean, these hands are not optional, so he catching them later for sure. But before I can stand against the tree sentinel, I was determined to get my horse and explore the entire bottom part of the map and search for materials, arrows and all the other stuff we're gonna need for this bow journey because you get a pretty down bad start when it comes to using the bow like these arrows they give you is enough to probably get through a couple of npcs and that's that so i did a bit of exploring collected some things bro th th this is gonna be a tough run i'm not gonna lie because how conservative I'm, I'm gonna have to be with my arrows is it's gonna be crazy like every time i die fighting a boss i'm probably gonna have to grind again for for the arrows Oh my god, <laughs> I just jumped off the mountain with my horse. Oh yeah, I will be keeping track of my deaths the entire playthrough, and we'll see the results at the end of the video. I'm curious to know if this is going to end up being, you know, worse or better than my first playthrough. During my first playthrough, I had a total of almost 800 deaths, man. Eventually, you know, after all the exploring and stuff like that, we made it to Florida. <laughs> I mean, Caleb. Bro, this is bad. This is bad. I got taken off my horse and now I'm being invaded by a fucking NPC. <laughs> well, getting chased by two dogs and Caitlyn, bro. <laughs> Hi, you're back. Forgive me. I've been testing you. Damn, girl, why the hell are you over in Caitlyn? Very well. Let my hand rest upon you for but a moment. After saying what's up to all my roundtable homies, I needed to return back to Kaylid for some unfinished business. You are very warm. This run is obviously going to require a rune farm that doesn't waste my arrows. So as a starting farm, I traveled to the area under the bridge over in Kaylid at the 
Lens Rise Grace. I, I don't even know if I said it correctly. But basically the area where the big bowling ball spawns and you can bait it to fall off for, you know, a decent amount of runes. It's really good as like, you know, a starting farm. So after farming to around like level 20, I decided it was time to take on the tree sentinel and anything else in the lands between. I think it's time. Y'all remember what we were saying earlier, right? Our first boss. Damn it. Whoa. Damn it. Oh. At first, the encounter was looking rough. This was my first time actually using a bow, but this also was the perfect introduction to the art of the bow. Not gonna lie, he was giving me the clappers while I was trying to get used to things. Pause, pause, not like that. But then the gamer energy started flowing through my body and he never landed a touch on me after getting my health this low and using all my flask as well. Who? Oh. And taken out. Like I said, these hands aren't optional. I don't care if you're an optional boss, you can get it. And there goes the tree sentinel. After defeating the tree sentinel, I got this big boost of confidence and I was like, oh yeah, we can do this for sure. <laughs> hey bro, you know that tree sentinel guy that was, you know, outside chilling, roaming your lands, bro? I took him out. You want his weapon, bro? I'll sell it to you right here. I do not need it. Yeah, sell his weapon for some arrows. Now our next objective is to conquer the Stormville Castle. But you know, like I said, this run is gonna take a lot of farming and grinding. So before I can face Stormville Castle, I farm some more, bought some items from the merchants. Bro, how are you hungry and you're literally selling meat, bro? A very important item I picked up is the Nomadic Cookbook 6. And this basically has the recipe to craft blood arrows. Cookbook. Whoa. There we go. I'm pretty sure that's the cookbook for the, uh, oh my goodness. I'm pretty sure that was the cookbook so I can make blood arrows. So being able to probably bleed with our arrows against these bosses is for sure going to help us big time. So this is essential. Don't mind me, just making my way to the grace so I can fight Margit. Oh, he's right behind me. I can't sit, fuck. This is bad, what the? Margit, hey, I'd rather fight you, buddy, come out. All right, so I don't have any blood arrows for this fight, but I do have poison arrows and I believe they are um, vulnerable to blood and poison, both uh, Margit and Godric. No. Okay, we're slipping up already. I'm not gonna lie and say this was, you know, a smooth fight. He almost got me a couple times and I, I should have died at this exact moment, which is crazy, but somehow I, I clutched up. One thing I wanna say for this video, I won't be showing the entire boss fights because this video will end up being hours long, most likely. So what I will do is probably do like little skips and cuts to like key moments of the fight. I still do have all the footage recorded, you know, for the entire playthrough, just in case, you know, you got the people out there who think I didn't beat the game using only a bow or cheated somehow or something. I have the entire playthrough recorded, so first try, first try. Get your ugly ass out of here, buddy. <clears throat> ugly ass out of here. First try, let's go. I actually maintain uh, a lot of arrows too. You get 99 of each and look how many I have on the bottom left. We kept a lot, so. Hey, so far this challenge is looking pretty promising. <laughs> Without wasting any time, there were two items that I wanted to use for my bow build and I went to go pick them up. It's the Arrow Sting and the Arrow's Reach Talisman. I'm pretty sure these are the only two bow talisman in the game, but if you're running a bow, you definitely might want to pick these two up. 
after I grabbed these, there was no need to grind arrows or anything because I had plenty. So I returned back to Stormvale Castle. Getting the Godric was easy. As an expert top 0.001% speedrunner, I zoomed past all the enemies like the Flash and we got into the boss fight in no time. This fight was not hard at all to be honest. I feel like I had pretty good preparation for the bosses of the Stormville Castle. Bro, you tried this move so many times, it don't work no more. Oh, he's doing it again. Bro, he's, is he doing it again? No way. Man, man just wants to give me a free win at this point. This man really chopped off his arm and attached a whole fire breathing dragon head just to still get clapped. But uh, I did slip up and die once from his disgusting hot breath. Whoa, nice, nice. Fuck, fuck. Don't burn me to death. Don't, don't. Wow. Oh, man. But that was no biggie. I just came back and showed him he's messing with the next Elden Lord in the making. He was only able to kill me that one time. Get your ass over here. Hold up. This man's on some bullshit right now. There we go. Get your ass out of here. And there it is. We conquered the Stormville Castle. It actually wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Damn, Godric and this dude must have some serious beef going on. Before we can make our way into the Academy of Rhea Lucaria, I journeyed around in search for Drip. <laughs> Oh, what the? Ah! This dude looks ugly. My, my get, oh my get. Bro, I don't look like a bandit no more though. I didn't want anything too crazy. I just wanted my outfit to fit the role of my character. After searching around for a bit, I decided to just go with this chain armor and face mask look. I feel he looked like a legit bow bandit. What do y'all think? In order to get into the academy, we have to snag the key from a body that is guarded by this big ass dragon, but this wasn't a problem. I, I, I want no smoke with you, bro. I want no smoke. Just give me the key. Yoinkies. Get me the hell out of here. <laughs> Just finesse your key, buddy. Bro, this dragon is literally searching for me. Go back to sleep. You want some arrows? <laughs> How dare you? <gasps> Let's go. We made it here. I'm not gonna lie though. These enemies, those dark magician fucks who constantly just like spam you with uh with the shards are, are pretty annoying. Let's see if we can just run past and possibly get straight to the boss fights. I do not want to deal with no dark magician Harry Potter. Oh, look at them come down. Look at them come down. Ooh. Ooh. Can't get me. Ooh. 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 <laughs> you thought. All right, we gotta play this cautious because this is this right here is their best student. That's the that's the S tier A plus 4.0 GPA fucking oh sorcery god. 
After speedrunning and dodging all the Hogwarts students, I finally made it to our first boss of the academy, the Red Wolf of Radigan. Yes, yes, give me to the boss fight, give me to the boss fight. Right. Okay, we do some damage. Ooh, I have poison arrows. I gotta put my bleed ones on. All right, during my first playthrough, not a problem. But this time around, this motherfucker was hella dodging my arrows and using aimbot hacks with a lot of the spells. Whoa. <gasps> oh my goodness. Okay, I gotta put on my bleed arrows. Unfortunately, I died a total of four times. Wow. Y'all, I don't remember this boss being this hard. This boss is putting the pressure on me with this bow. It wasn't too hard, it just took a lot of patience. All the dodging was annoying and made it unnecessarily difficult, but it definitely was the experience I needed to, you know, understand how to properly punish the attacks rather than just spam my bow. Dead. Perfect timing. After finally getting this annoying dodging little fucker out of the way, it was time to face our Queen Ranala. On the way there, I got pressed by this down bad tier 3 Twitch sub. And when I tell y'all that this dude did not want to see me win, bro, he's definitely about to be mainless his whole life. Bro, why are you staring at me like that? Stop! You violated the law. Alright, bro, I don't got time for you. Keep it a st Whoa. No way you follow me up. No way. Oh. <laughs> this man followed me. I'm, I'm spamming my roll button right now. Bro, you could have took your ass back downstairs. Oh, you, you want to help me with Ranala? Yeah, exactly. Know your place. Know your place, shitter. Know your place. Oh. Yeah, know your place. That's why you belong outside. Hold up. Nah, just for that, I'm killing him. A few moments later. Just for following me up here, buddy. Who the fuck are you, bitch? Jones, barbecue, and foot. <laughs> <laughs> Almost spit out my water, bro. Why does my character eyes look like that? Alright, so to be honest, Ranala was almost the same experience as a Red Wolf. She took a lot of patience and during the second phase, my timing had to be on point with the punishes or else I'd literally just get hit by the annoying spells mid shooting my bow. Now just like the Red Wolf, I died a total of 4 times during this and this was just due to the second phase. Wow. No. The first phase was not a problem, but the second phase, it was just a lot of patience. And even though she is a mage and you know it's good to play them really aggressive, you can't play like that with the bow, so it just made it extremely difficult. You just gotta be on point with your punishes. So just a reminder, if you wanna try this challenge for yourself, be sure to have a lot of patience with these bosses. After defeating Ronala, it was time to grind levels, materials, arrows, bow upgrades, and just anything I needed to prepare for the big capital. So obviously it was time for me to step up my rune farm method. Up until now, I was using the same method where I bait the ball to roll off the map to get about like 2k runes each time. Now this is a good starting method, but I'm at the point now where it's just going to take a lot of grinding in order to get one level in, so we definitely got to find the next method. All right, now this is a bow only run, meaning I have access to the infamous bow farm that is right beneath Kaled. I'm pretty sure y'all know what this is. 
and our way of accessing it is by doing the bloody finger quest line and it requires pvp and if y'all are wondering am i really going to be doing pvp with a bow the answer is yes i did attempt pvp with my bow and it was surprisingly fun so enjoy these little bonus clips of me doing pvp with a bow <laughs> Bo bad you're going crazy. Yo, Bo Bandit is crazy, y'all. Rapid fire. <gasps> no way you got that pulled off. bad his friend literally was afk bro i'm loving this after some little bow pvp we got the piece of cloth and soaked it then we got access to the infamous bow farm throughout this playthrough i'm most likely going to be returning to this area a lot because this gives you a good amount of runes and this is all i need right here for the rest of the game to be honest ah and here we go the ultimate farm spot perfect because this is literally a bow run so yep that means we have access to a really good farm let's do it for the one time one time run off yeah perfect y'all perfect really quick i'm gonna show you guys all the farm areas i'll be using so if you decide to do this challenge for yourself I forgot to mention that I did defeat the Bell Baron Hunter over at the War Master Shack to be able to purchase Thin Beast Bones, which is the main material needed in order to craft arrows. For most of this playthrough, the main arrows I used was Blood Arrows, which you can farm the Blood Rose material over at the Rose Church right below the Academy. Over nearby in the area, there is a Side of Grace, and you basically just take your horse through the church, grab all the material, then head back to the Side of Grace, and the material should respawn. You can repeat this for however many times you need to farm it for. Another is the poison arrows. You can farm the poison blossom material at the ruins under the Fort Church of America. You farm it the same way as the blood rose, grab the material, hit the side of grace at the church, and just repeat it for however long you need to farm it for. Any other arrows you guys see me using throughout this playthrough, I most likely bought the material or the arrows from a merchant. One thing you guys want to do is make sure you get every arrow variation from the merchants. Also, another tip, you can use flight pain materials to craft fletched arrows, which has more range than regular arrows, and crafting these also allow you to carry two sets of the same arrows. So basically, you can carry regular and fletched arrows, and this is good in case you need to run, you know, two sets of lead arrows or something like that. The location I use to farm these is underground in the Siofra River area. I believe I said that correct. And it's right next to the grace that is called Below the Well, over at the top. Basically birds will spawn here and you can easily farm them up for material, hit the grace and they respawn. Throughout this entire playthrough I return to these areas often in order to farm the materials I need. 
And I'm saying this just so I don't have to constantly show you guys when I go out to farm materials to save some video length. Next objective on the list was to make our way towards the capital. Oh, that boy trying to be like me back there. You are not the bow bandit. I'm the only bow bandit, buddy. Oh, he's charging it up. Oh, he better not hit me. Oh, there's two of them. Yo, they trying to be like me. I had to fight the Draconic Tree Sentinel so we can get in. He wasn't a problem. It's literally a pack-a-punch Tree Sentinel. Some light. <laughs> no way. I almost used a whole set of 99 poison arrows to defeat him. But it was all good because I farmed quite a bit to prepare for what the capital has to bring for us. And there it is. First thing I did after making it into the capital was speed run towards the area where the black bow is located. Here we go. Just what I needed. The black bow. Okay, so this bow is pretty good because it's a long bow with the traits of a short bow. So the barrage skill comes default with this bow. This thing was definitely worth upgrading, so I went around to collect some smithing stones. Just so you guys know, I used the starting short bow that was included with my class up until now. To be honest, I can probably get through the entire game with that short bow because no bow in the game has better than descaling for any of the attributes. After my little hunt for smithing stones to upgrade my bow, I made my way back to the capital and speed ran up to the Golden Shade Godfrey boss fight. And here we are, Godfrey, at least is uh, the gold shade. Oh. Damn it. Okay. To be honest, when I first encountered him, I was pretty surprised how much damage I was taking away from him. It may not have been a lot, but for a bow, this was not bad at all. Unfortunately though, I did die twice due to some slip ups. Holy hell. Are you kidding me? So to not waste my special arrows because I was taking away, you know, a good amount of damage, I decided to use my golden arrows. It was probably best for me to not use my special arrows because I was taking away a good amount of damage and all the special arrows, you know, I did a lot of grinding for those blood and poison arrows and stuff. And you can literally purchase the golden arrows and I was still doing, you know, a good amount of damage. So the golden arrows was probably the best bet for this. Yo, that was close. He almost caught me. I got bad greedy right there, but I just want to get rid of him. Let's go, though. That's another boss down. Now we make our way up there. <laughs> but first, though, first, though, I believe we do get the uh, the Earth Tree bow from here, which is also a bow that I want to use for this build. So, all right. So after you defeat him, you can find the Earth Tree bow in this area that I was anticipating to use for this playthrough because it does holy damage, it scales with faith, and you can use the golden arrows at their max potential because they also do holy damage. But y'all will see later in this playthrough that I just decided to scrap that idea and just not go with that build. It was time to make our way up the stairs to Morgoth the Omen King, Margit in his true form when in reality, he just returned with a pack a punch weapon and is still trash as before. <laughs> Just like the Mario fight, I came in and brought the heat. This time around, I used both poison and blood arrows. To be honest, this fight was just as easy as my first encounter with him over at the Stormville Castle. Although uh, I did get a bit of deja vu because there was a moment where he hit me pretty hard and I should have died, but somehow I didn't. And if you guys remember, this exact thing happened during the Mario fight. Now this is usually the BS that happens with the boss's health bar, but I guess I was lucky enough for it to happen to me. Hey, I got nothing to complain about. I was saved from a death and a boss restart. First try, first try, first try. First try, first try, let's go. Whew. I thought he had me there, honestly. Morgoth surprisingly didn't take many arrows. I came in with maxed arrows and this is what I ended with. After the boss fight, I sat at the side of Grace to meet with Melina, where she basically asked us to take her to the Flame of Ruin so she can assist us in entering the Erd Tree. Alright y'all, grab a snack, popcorn, or something because this is when things start to get challenging for this playthrough. I traveled straight towards the mountaintops of the Giants to fight you know who. Ah, Fire Giant, man. Oh no, he do like no damage. 
Fire Giant is the first boss I struggled with and I actually started losing hope for this challenge. During my first playthrough, I'm gonna be honest, I just straight cheesed this boss after dying multiple times to BS. This time around, I actually wasn't sure if they already patched the bug where you make him fall off the side of the mountain and he takes a lot of damage. But I'm gonna be honest, I was considering doing it again if it got to that level. This boss, man, this boss caused me nine long deaths. Jesus Christ, man. Might not seem like many, but each death was just a long battle, man. It was, ooh, man. Wow, he was almost dead. What is this game? This boss is annoying, bro. My God. Fucking roly-poly, fucking ugly ass looking. I don't know what to call you. Literally looks like a fucking Pokemon. My controller died! My controller died! My controller! Bro! My controller died, I swear to God! What? And there was a point where I had to grind again for blood arrows because I was just losing so many. But hey, I didn't give up though. I just kept trying and kept trying until something worked. And eventually the game just decided to be on my side and no BS happened and it was just a smooth fight. Yes, got him, got him, got him. These bombs explode on me. These bombs explode on me, just please. Confirm the kill, please. Thank you. Hey, this was a very traumatizing fight. I'm gonna have nightmares of this ugly motherfucker. <laughs> I have long observed the lands between. This world is in dire need of repair and death. Indiscriminate. Are you prepared to commit a cardinal sin? The one who walks alongside flame shall one day meet the road of destined death. Goodbye. We're getting closer and closer to becoming the Elden Lord with only a bow and no summons or spirits. You can't forget that. If you made it this far, because I know this is a decently long video. I'd appreciate if you dropped a like. This is my first Elden Ring video on the channel and I'm looking forward to doing more challenges if you guys enjoy this. Without wasting time, let's make our way to the next challenger or challengers. <gasps> Ooh. Bro, I thought I wasn't gonna make that, what the hell? This scare is literally straight jump scares. All right, look who we have here. Man ran the dirty bubble, the God Skin duo. Whoa, come on. I initially didn't have a strat coming into this. I was just hoping I can hold both of them off with blood and poison arrows. At first, I was focusing on the big boy mainly because I felt the skinny one was easier to deal with. But hey, I guess I was wrong because the skinny one just had godlike reactions and dodged almost every arrow. He did a pretty good job at wasting my arrows, not gonna lie. Mr. Roly Poly. No way. I'm dead, I'm dead. I literally came and see my screen, bro. His fucking blubber is all over my screen. Wow, bro. Just perfect timing with these, huh? Oh my god, bro. Wow, bro. After dying around like five times, it finally hit me. Sleep arrows are a thing. I can literally put one asleep and focus on the other one to take pressure away. So I decided to travel all the way over to the main academy gate because 
there is a merchant there who sells 20 sleep arrows as well as the cookbook and some little materials so we can craft them my man only sells like three bro but it's something so uh, i guess all right this time we're coming in with sleep arrows because one of these fuckheads got to get put to sleep I think he gotta be the fat one first. Let's see. Why fight two god skins when I can put one to sleep and just bully the other? W strategy, am I right? As expected, this was a successful strat. It was kind of rough, but hey, it worked. Sleep arrows overpowered. <laughs> Woo! Let's go. Barely beat him, bro. If I wouldn't, bro, if I didn't win this one right here, I don't know what I would have done because I'm so low right now in sleep arrows. These sleep arrows, they're so hard to come across. Making my way to Malaketh, I discovered what's to be the most annoying area and enemies, these fucking ugly birds. <laughs> This area made me rage harder than any boss I fought before this. I was ready to start swinging at my monitor or something. Please don't be annoying. 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 Please. Bro, there's no way these fucking birds are. Bro. Bro. Oh my God. I think I just found the most annoying fucking enemy in this goddamn game. I couldn't speed run past them without somehow getting hit. These birds got aimbot scripts on or something. Because of this, I had to take the tactical approach and American sniper my way through all these birds. Ah, finally, Malaketh. His first phase, the Beast Clergyman, was easy to deal with. I mastered all the hit windows and timings very early on with no problem. I was getting through the first phase with barely getting hit or just not getting hit at all. He fights pretty repetitive in the first phase, so it was easy to just, you know, kite him around to, you know, shoot him with the bow. But the second phase, man, the second phase was something else. Man, I do not remember this boss being this difficult in the second phase. Bro. Twenty's on some bullshit. Bro. During my first playthrough, I straight rolled Malaketh, but I'm guessing it's because I had, you know, the OP YouTube build, what they will say. After getting clapped for hours and losing hundreds of blood arrows and also having to grind for more, I decided to take my frustration back to the Grand Library and just reset my stats. If you guys remember earlier, I said that as I was leveling up, I was putting points into Faith to basically, you know, I was anticipating to use the Urtree bow. My original build was going to include that, but like I said, I just decided to scrap that idea. So I might as well, you know, reset my stats and put those points that are in Faith into something else and spread them around. These points will for sure have more use in other stats. Even after resetting my stats and putting more points into my health, I still struggled a bit. Doing this ball only challenge forces you to deal with the boss's movesets the whole time until you defeat them rather than just whipping out your bleed build and destroying them before they do their signature one shot move or putting you know all the attention to your mimic while you try to do your full mortal combat combo with the brutality and everything. Eventually though after testing my will to continue this challenge I stepped up my game and showed them that I'm no casual gamer bro. It took a total of 18 deaths to finally beat him. Oh my god, oh my god. He's almost dead. <gasps> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. To kill what? Bro. Let's go. Jesus Christ. This boss was, I don't know. I don't remember him being this hard on my first run. Yes. 
You will not become Elden Lord. We get it, but I'm becoming the Elden Lord, buddy. See, we could have been homies, but... Come and come and have my ass. Could have been homies, my dude, but... You know, you want to be an op now. This was a boss who didn't cause me problems on my first playthrough. He definitely was on the easier side of bosses. But I guess when you have a bow and launch arrows at his head, this dude literally becomes a whole Matrix cast member with Ultra Instinct dodges. The only arrows you most likely hitting on him is from punishing him mid-attack when he's charging up a spell. And if you try to spam your barrage, you'll most likely catch some heat-seeking flying magic blades. Also too, when you get his health bar about halfway, this man literally pulls out a whole chug jug right in your face. I tried to stop this every single time, but I, I, I just couldn't, man. Some way, somehow, he found a way to pull a whole chug jug out with mini shields. Based on all this though, I'm sure you guys already know that this was a struggle. <laughs> oh, fine, I did die a good 12 times before finally defeating him. Like I said, this boss is definitely on the easier side, for other weapons at least, so this was unexpected. I thought I was just going to straight run through him with my bow. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. I don't know why this boss is this ridiculous, bro. Godfrey, the non-golden shade, the actual Godfrey, was our next challenger. Just like Maliketh, I mastered his first phase pretty fast. You get a lot of openings. Now I had the most trouble in the second phase when he reveals himself as Horolo. You really need patience and have a good understanding of his moveset because, like I said, you can't kill these bosses mad quick so you're kind of forced to just deal with their moves. Including those BS signature one-shot moves and Godfrey, I mean Hora, seems to have some pretty high damaging moves and if your health isn't upgraded enough, these will one-shot you. My strategy for this fight was to just kite him around until he did certain moves that gave me the good openings. I had the most painful moment where I got a little too excited thinking, you know, this was a win, but nope, my brain shut off, I choked up, and I literally died after getting him this low. Feels bad, man. It took a total of 16 deaths for one to finally work, and my strategy was pretty good. There was just so many slip-ups that happened. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. One more, actually two more technically. We <laughs> we got Rat again and then fucking Elden Beast, man. We're stairs away from becoming the Elden Lord. <laughs> but wait though, before we can even go up there, this boss literally took hundreds of arrows from me, man. I have to regrind. Much, much, much later. It's time to finally enter the Ur Tree and put it into this challenge. This has been an extremely fun challenge, honestly, and I didn't expect to make it this far, considering this is my second playthrough and how much I struggled during my first one. We now have to defeat Radigan and the Elden Beast. I'm gonna tell you all this now, I already had the timings for Radigan's moves pretty down after all the deaths from the first playthrough, so I, I got a pretty good understanding of, you know, the openings and stuff for the moves. So he wasn't too hard, but he was just very time consuming to fight. I calculated around 10 minutes each time just to get through Radigan alone. May not seem long, but when you're kiting with the bow for openings, constantly doing the same thing, and you also got those builds where you just straight disintegrate bosses, it feels long. The experience with the bow was a complete opposite from when I used an actual weapon or like a, a sword, you know? So on my first playthrough, most of my problems occurred during the Elden Beast fight. I had no patience causing a lot of deaths during the Elden Beast fight, and we all know that that boss is more running than actually fighting, so it's easy to get frustrated and slip up and do something stupid. Alright, so this time around, for, you know, the bow only challenge, my problems were with Radigan. The biggest what the hell while fighting Radigan is that he literally catches all your arrows and follows up with counterattacks. It's like a 75-25 if you shoot arrows at him from neutral. You got a 25% chance of hitting him. You really just gotta know how to punish his attacks because your neutral stuff will just get shut down most of the time. Now I have a complete understanding of his moves like I said, but some way, somehow, I could never make it to the Elden Beast fight with enough healing flags because I was always getting hit by the most random stuff due to how repetitive and time consuming this fight is. 
The Elder Beast fight was easy with the bow. Now, when you're using an actual weapon, you kind of got to maneuver around, search for your openings and stuff. With a bow, you can almost shoot him the entire time during the boss fight until he starts shooting the fire at you and stuff like that. But it's so easy to, you know, kite him around and beat him with a bow. But every time I made it to the Elden Beast, I always had that moment where I needed that one heal that I just didn't have because Radigan was sucking them all. Bro. Oh, why? Why? 17 deaths, guys. 17. It took 17 deaths to defeat Radigan and the Elden Beast to finally put an end to this challenge and claim Elden Lord with only a bow. God, this is it. This is it. Stamina, 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 stamina. This is it. Do that, do that, do that, do that. This is it. What is he doing? What is he doing? Oh. This is it. This is it. Pay attention. We gotta focus up. Okay. One more, one more. This is it. This is it. This is it. Let's, oh, oh my God, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We finally beat Elden Ring only a bow. Only a bow the entire game, bro. Oh my. Let's go. <laughs> I'm so hyped, man. A hundred death exactly. A hundred death exactly. That's when I beat it, huh? Oh my god, bro. Here we go. We're about to become the Elden Lord after. Let's check. 33 hours. We stopped at level 125. No summons. Bow only. Ooh, I'm hyped. It took 17 deaths. Got him on the 17th death. Oh, man. Ah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I became the Elden Lord with only a bow. Here we go. Oh, man. I really hope y'all enjoyed this journey. I put a lot of time into this. After calculating and adding all the deaths from the bosses and other moments, I died a total of 100 times exactly compared to over 700 plus on my first playthrough. Crazy, right? That will conclude this challenge and video. We became the Elden Lord with only a bow. If there's any Elden Ring challenge y'all would like to request, be sure to drop a comment and I will catch y'all on the next video. Later. Yeah.